Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager here, once again with another video on The Flash Season 4. So this is going to be my review for Episode 11, otherwise entitled The Elongated Knight Rises. So obviously before we get into the rest of the video, there will be spoilers because we're going to be talking about the major talking points from this episode. So if you've not watched the episode, go do that and then come back to this video later on. But if you are sticking around, be sure to let me know in the comments section down below what you enjoyed the most from this episode. What did you love? What did you hate? If there is anything like that. Just let me know in the comments section down below, as well as being sure to leave a like on the video if you want to enjoy it, and subscribing to the channel if you're new. So last episode was the big troll, the Flash episode, where we saw Barry go through his court case, and eventually, just to sum it all up, he got found guilty, and now he is in Iron Heights prison, with uh, probably a few people that he's actually put in there himself, like he's put them in there himself, but, you know, as the Flash, and possibly as Barry Allen, as the, you know, forensic investigator, maybe he helped, uh, so with some of their cases and, you know, putting them in jail and stuff like that. But we start off this episode with Barry in jail and he's actually been there for just over a week. I think he's been there for eight days when he was writing on the wall. I think it was eight strokes, maybe nine strokes that he had on there, like a tally. So I'm going to, it was there for just over a week, roughly. Uh, but he has been, you, just, you see him use his powers in there. There's like a prison riot going on. He's like, stuff this, quickly uses them to get rid of the prisoners and how about the guards? So even though he's in prison, you think he'd keep his powers on the down low, he's still helping out uh, the guards in, you know, Central City, I guess, because of that riot went a bit more out of control, he might have, uh, you know, those prisoners might have actually gotten out. And we had that hostage situation at the beginning of the episode, which was pretty funny. It was a bit, maybe a bit over the top, like some people might have found it a bit stupid, but I thought it was a, you know, pretty funny moment, just like, you know, that, 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 uh, that, that criminal, I guess, if you want to call it, with all those hostages and all these demands and stuff was pretty funny. But this is like our first example of Ralph going out and saving the day by himself, even though he did it in like a pretty unconventional way. And Ralph was getting a bit too cocky with his abilities, thinking that, oh, I'm indestructible, nothing bad can happen to me. Which, you know, later down the track, uh, you know, Ralph sort of gets that thrown into his face. Now, the villain for this episode, or the villains, but we'll stay with the main villain, was Axel Walker, aka the Trickster, or the Trickster's son, or the new Trickster, or Trickster 2.0, whatever you want to call him. Anyway, he's the son of James Jesse, obviously the original Trickster played by Mark Hamill, but he's been in prison, you know, we haven't seen him since season one. We've had the Trickster in season one and two, and then we had like that one from Earth 3 last season. This time around, we can't get Mark Hamill in this season, which is a bit disappointing, but we did have a version of the Trickster in Axel Walker. But he's actually broken out by his mother, Prank, otherwise known as Zoe Clark. Now, she's actually the Prank from the 1990s show, so they made that almost like canon on the show. I guess it already was from season one with James Jesse, but I don't think we saw any photos of Prank in season one, so they brought her into it and tied her back to... Uh, the 90s, I guess, in this universe, if you want to call it that. Now, Axel Walker got taken to the hospital wing after he ate some pudding. Now, I think this might be a reference to Harley Quinn because Prank was from the 90s. Now, Harley Quinn was introduced in the 90s, but not till like the mid 90s, roughly, in the animated series of Batman. So a lot of people do say that Harley Quinn was, you know, based off of Prank. And they do have similar mannerisms, especially if you go back and watch the 90s show. And even now, you know, the trickster is sort of similar to the Joker. Prank was his, like, you know, assistant. Harley Quinn was essentially the Joker's assistant as well. Had similar attributes and similar things that they did throughout the stories. So a lot of people do say that Harley Quinn is based off Prank. And I think maybe that Pudding was a reference to Harley Quinn because that's one of her saying, you know, Pudding. That's one of her sayings. So maybe that's just me that thinks that, but let me know if you agree with me. But as I said, there was a lot of like connections back to the 90s show with Prank and just the trickster involved, I guess, in this episode as well. We saw photos from the 90s show and all of that. So I thought that was really cool and I love it when they do that. And that everything that they said in this episode was from the character back in the 90s. Like those were the attributes you had. She was like this normal person, if you want to call it that. And then she got like obsessed with the trickster and broke him out of, uh, I don't think it necessarily, I don't think it was jail. I think he was like going to a court case and she got him out of that. I think that's how it worked. Anyway, it's something similar to that. But um, yeah, I loved how they connected it all. And that was just really awesome. Now we had Big Sir in this episode, who was played by uh, Goldberg, the wrestler, uh, is it Bill Goldberg? That might be his name. I think that's his full name. Anyway, he's playing Big Sir, and yeah, he's going to be in next episode as well. I think he's only in this episode, next episode, uh, which may hint that maybe Barry goes somewhere, but we'll have to wait and see. But essentially, the Axel Walker trickster's plan for this episode was to impress his dad, because, you know, his dad got out of prison about a year ago, didn't really come looking for Axel at all. And Axel just wants to impress him and be like, hey, dad, I can do it as well. Let's all team up and be a trickster family together. So that's basically his plan for the episode and involves actually targeting Ralph, which is where we move on to Ralph sort of getting exposed, if you want to call it, hashtag exposed, 
uh, in this episode where Ralph's getting a bit cocky with his abilities, thinking he's indestructible, and the trickster pours acid on his knee, and uh, yeah, if it was anyone else, it would have been straight down to the bone. Like, this was over the top, very powerful acid, and just because of Ralph's abilities, it saved him, and it only gave him sort of like flesh wounds, if you want to call it, like pretty easy to heal wounds. So Ralph got very, very lucky at that stage. Now we had one of the most impressive cameos I think we're ever going to see on the show, and that was Bebo from Legends of Tomorrow. If you don't watch Legends of Tomorrow, you'd have no idea what Bebo is. You'd be like, what the hell is Bebo? Even though you might've seen some memes going around here and there since the uh, the mid-season finale of Legends. But he's essentially like the, the Arrowverse's version of like Tickle Me Elmo, I guess. So we saw Bebo get covered in acid, and then we saw like Bebo drones, I guess. They were like flying Bebos, I guess they were. But yeah, so Bebo made the cameo. Probably my favorite cameo we've ever, we've ever had on the Arrowverse shows. Um, yeah, it was pretty funny. I wasn't expecting it. Now, Ralph's new suit does tease the Flash Man. Like, Cisco has it like contained in like the size of like, maybe like a matchbox, if it's not a, not a tiny bit smaller, like around the size of a matchbox, Ralph's suit is in. When it opens up, it like glows as if he's opened like a treasure chest full of gold. This is once again another tease to the Flash suit, like Ralph's like normal grey suit in general I think is a tease to the Flash suit, but this is another step, so hopefully, hopefully this season we get some steps towards the Flash ring being introduced, and then next season it is like a full on thing. So we have the new suit that Barry wears, so maybe Cisco's able to tinker with it, and maybe get it to fit into a nice little ring compartment that Barry can just shoot at and get into really quickly. I think we all want the Flash ring, and Ralph's like small suit and how it can expand and stuff is uh, a little step to that, so good work. But we find out that Big Sir or Goldberg's character is actually helping out Barry because, you know, he knew Henry Allen. Henry Allen helped him out, so Goldberg essentially had like an appendix issue. Appendix was going to explode. Henry Allen pointed out saying, yo, this dude is gonna die if nothing happens here, and he convinced Warden Wolf to actually get the surgery done. So Goldberg, uh, not Goldberg, uh, Big Sir would have died if it wasn't for Henry Allen, so, you know, Big Sir's just repaying the favour to Barry due to his uh, father's help. Now, they do actually mention uh, Lexi LaRoche in this episode, and they say, like, you know, she's uh, Caitlin's childhood bully. Now, she's been, been mentioned, like, once on the show before, and that was all the way back in season one. It was like that bully episode, you know, when Barry has to face his childhood bully, uh, bully who has also become a meta. That's when uh, uh, Caitlin's childhood bully was also mentioned as well. So they bring it back, and that's like a trigger point for Caitlyn. So Lexi LaRoche and Puppies in Danger. So we have two trigger points for Caitlyn. So uh, start writing those down because uh, you, might want to, you might need to use them later in the season when you really, really, really need Killer Frost to come out and play. Now in that final fight between Ralph and Trickster and Prank, it's, it's a bit unsure like if Ralph saved the day or if Harry saved the day. I, th I think it's a bit of both, but like Harry never gets like the recognition. Like he does a lot and never gets the recognition. It's always someone else that gets like praised for saving the day. But like Ralph, Cisco and Caitlin would have all died if Harry didn't do anything there. If he didn't get that um, acid fixed in time. It's not like the suit was acid proof or Ralph had like learned to avoid getting burnt by acid or something. Harry saved the day there. So yeah, he doesn't get enough recognition, does he Harry? It's a bit disappointing. But we finally, finally have Ralph being called the elongated man or the elongated man, however, however you want to pronounce it. That's his name now. He's not very happy with it, but that name is definitely going to stick, Ralph, so you're going to have to get used to it. But finally, that's his name. Like, at least he has a name. He was, I think he almost teased calling himself Mr. Fantastic throughout the episode. He was called Stretchy Man for a good chunk of it. Finally has a name, which is good to see, and at least you can just refer to him as the elongated man, I guess, when he is suited up. You have to call him Ralph in a suit now, or Pajama Onesie Grey Dude. You know, he, at least he has a name now, a title, and I think Ralph will come to appreciate that uh, soon enough. But I guess the big reveal we have at the end is when we see Dawn Allen. I'm doing Dawn Allen because it's not confirmed whether she's Dawn Allen or not. You know, there's another hint that it is her, but you know, don't go around saying she is Dawn Allen because it's Dawn Allen. We're just calling her that because it's most likely who she is. But we see Dawn Allen show up in Jitters when uh, Ralph and Cisco are there. You know, once again, another weird conversation. Pretty weird. But we actually see her writing in a diary of sorts, or like a journal or just a little notebook. The Speed Force symbols, or the Speed Force symbols, that um, Barry had been writing on the walls before. So that's another link. Once again, I think it's pointing to the fact that in episode 15 or 16 of the season, we're going to get a big episode that revolves around this. Now, she said she was going to be in one more episode. So this is that episode, I guess. But I think that was just a tease. Trying to take away from the point that she'll probably be in more of this season, especially in the back half. Uh, well, not the back half, we're in the back half now, but like towards the end. I think she's going to be a big player 
and not only devote, but just like connecting some of the Flash family and just learning more about the Speed Force and just speedsters in general. So I might do a video on this this weekend all on it and trying to figure out what's going on there, but I'm not promising things because there's some other videos I want to do. But um, yeah, hopefully we see more of her, not like next episode, but like in the episodes to come, we just get more teasers as to what's going on with her because uh, there's a lot of confusion. We're just calling her Dawn Allen at the moment because it looks like that's what the case is, but um, yeah. But overall, I thought this was a very enjoyable episode. I enjoyed it very much. More steps in Ralph's development as a hero, which I very much enjoyed. And we finally got him called the Elongated Man. It was awesome seeing Trickster back, prank in the episode, just connecting back to the 90s shows. It was awesome and I loved it very much. So hopefully you guys did as well. But thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you drop a like on the video to show your support. Let me know in the comment section down below what was your favorite part of the episode. What did you love? What did you hate? What are your thoughts on the Dawn, uh, Dawn Allen stuff? Are you finally happy that, uh, or are you happy, might I say, that Ralph finally has his uh, name of the elongated, the elongated man, might I say? Just let me know in the comment section down below all of that. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye. <laughs>